Hello everyone. Um, six or seven years ago I have built this device here. It's a um, Birkeland ADA generator to produce uh, NO2 gas and with the NO2 gas it's possible to produce nitric acid from air. Um, currently this uh, device is uh, not working because over the years I have used it uh, for uh, to get spare parts and to to build other things from it so now I want to uh, completely disassemble it and rebuild everything so to get it back to a working state so this will be quite a mission I think uh, it will take several weeks to finish it because apparently I can't work full time on it just just part time and on weekends and um, my plan is to share all the, the plans with you, the building plans, and to tell you everything about it, how to, to build such a thing. So let's have a closer look to it. Um, here, basically, that's the, the plasma chamber where the hot plasma burns. I've made some slight modifications to a common Birkeland ADA generator. So I will tell you everything more in detail about it and show you the plans. But basically uh, the, the main idea is that here in the plasma chamber um, there is a very hot plasma burning generated through high voltage. And there is common air blown through the plasma chamber and the plasma does nothing else as it uh, rips apart the nitrogen and also the oxygen atoms so you have nascent, uh, nascent uh, nitrogen and nascent oxygen and they combine to NO gas and the NO gas uh, apparently does combine to uh, NO2 and if the NO2 is blown through uh, or bubble through water, then it will react to uh, HNO3, so nitric acid, which is a very useful chemical in metallurgy, very needed for. So, this up here is the main power source. It consists out of uh, four microwave transformers. There is also a second high voltage, high frequency, high voltage power source that's not shown here yet, but I will explain that in detail. These kind of um, flasks, they contain silica gel to dry the, the air that they're blown into, uh, but I'm not sure if they, uh, if I will use them again, so I think it will pretty much work also with, with common air that's not right. Okay, so let's get things started and disassemble the whole thing. So here I have disassembled the first part. That's, uh, as I've already told, the um, low frequency high voltage supply made out of microwave transformers and apparently for other projects I have needed the, the uh, coolers so apparently I have to buy new ones so currently I'm making a list of everything that I need to to buy to make this device functional again what we can see here that's um, the air drying system, very primitive as you can see, um, it's just silica gale inside, but um, as I told, uh, I don't think that I will need that, so I will leave that back. And here you can see the actual um, plasma cell, that was the, the inlet of the air from the top. The lid of it was water cooled because uh, all the, the heat of the plasma was um, going up and, and heating up the upper part. So this was water cooled as well as the whole thing was water cooled. 
And here at the other side, you can see the, uh, the outlet of the um, NO2 gas. Yeah, so next step is to disassemble that completely and show you the inner parts. And my mission for today is to simply write down all the, the parts that I will need to buy to make that completely functional again and to improve some things. Uh, the major thing why I want to disassemble it and renew it completely is first of all to make that video and second um, it was never really completely tight which was a big problem because NO2 gas is pretty toxic and if you are subjected to NO2 gas for a longer while you are getting cough and all kind of really nasty symptoms so I want to really get that tight and really working well so I can produce um, nitric acid without um, being the NO2 gas a hazard to myself. So finally I managed to get the lid down. Here is the, the water cooled lid and here was the, the air inlay. So let's have a look inside into the plasma chamber. I think you don't see a lot here on the video but it will get more clear once I open it up completely. You may ask yourself why I have used such a, a long tube here, why I made so much windings and as far as I remember correctly I made this because um, I, am, I have had actually the full high voltage potential uh, across the whole water cooling system. So um, the long tube or the many windings is basically meant to uh, increase the, the resistance in order to don't have uh, a big power loss from the um, shortage of the, of the water cooling. Um, so that's basically the reason for the long tube. But I'm, I'm not really sure how I will do it in the future when I reassemble the whole thing. If I um, will do a oil cooling or if I will use the same system, um, we'll, th we'll see. I need to, to think about it. As you can see, I've removed all the tubings and I've thrown it out here because there are still a lot of water inside and uh, I've created a, a mess inside, so now I let the water flow out of the tubes out here. Now I've put it out here to let the cooling water flow out. There was actually still quite a lot of water inside. And yeah, and here on the floor I created a mess. So yeah, but however, <coughs> here it's easy to see the two electrodes because uh, this is one of the electrodes this stainless steel tube and this tube here uh, is the other electrode where the high voltage potential is um, attached to and between two, those two electrodes there is the there is a high voltage arc and that is what what is creating the NO2 and now I'm going to completely disassemble this thing to see what's inside. So here you can see the inner electrode a little bit better. There's the water cooling of the inner electrode. That's the inlet and that's the outlet. And here was the gas outlet for the NO2 gas. So now I'm going to disassemble it completely. I've probably found the 
the leak where the NO2 was coming out because here is a here is a crack in the plastic and that was probably the issue that I didn't find when I had it in operation the last time but as I told it's kind of seven or six or seven years ago okay so let's go on with this assembly So here is finally the, the inner electrode and uh, I have made it uh, from common steel so I will replace this inner electrode with stainless steel and here this part was actually made that uh, uh, the arc can be initialized here and due to the heat the arc is going up here going up here and finally the arc burns here constantly so this is just to initialize the arc and it goes up and then it constantly burns here and this um, helps also by the magnets that are in here they're also drawing the uh, the arc further up and they have a second aim to um, to make the plasma go around in the plasma chamber so it's a very strange effect but I will later on show it as you can see here this is just uh, the outer electrode it's just a common stainless steel tube nothing special and here is the cooling mantle which I will disassemble now okay so finally I got it open um, this was the, the lower end of the plasma tube and this is the upper end of the plasma tube um, here are the magnets um, and as you can see there is a lot of oxidation already going on because uh, it was full of water for seven years and I think there are some colonies of some bacteria or fungus or I don't know I think I will just put it in hot water to kill everything that's on it and uh, then clean it up don't know how yet but we'll find a way and as I have told the magnets they are actually an improvement I think to a normal Birkeland ADA generator because uh, I had the problem that the plasma was always burning on just one spot and then I had the idea to just use magnets like that and it actually helped because um, now the, the plasma didn't stay at one spot so it's kind of swirling around in the tube it's due to, due to the magnetic field um, I don't I do not fully understand why the plasma is doing that um, but it is like it is and so the the magnets are actually used to uh, keep the plasma from from burning on just one spot and yeah that's it so now I'm going to clean that up So now I took the measures of the two parts. I'm going to clean that up, but um, there are the, the measures in the background of the paper, and I'm going to draw that on the on the computer to make it easier to understand and easier to view. So this is now the <coughs> drawing. My next step is to uh, draw this on the computer and uh, to think about how to reassemble everything and what to replace, what I should leave it as it is. So for example this tube 
uh, and the magnets will probably leave as it is just um, make a more proper and more tight lid on the top and on the bottom and for the inner electrode here I think it will completely replace it because it's uh, it was made out of um, just common steel uh, and I want to make it from stainless steel so yeah as I told my next step is to think about how to reassemble it and what parts should be replaced and what parts can stay well, I have managed to disassemble this part here and actually I think I will reuse it because um, I don't see a reason why to don't reuse it and it's made out of brass and just need to give it a clean and it should be fine so I've cleaned that part here a little bit and actually I found that I have a few materials here that I can use to start working but uh, most of the materials I will probably need to buy next week but one thing that I will do today is for example the, the tip here to make it from stainless steel and all the other tubing so this stainless steel tube here I need to to buy next week also here the, the fans that I have disassembled um, I also uh, already wrote a list what I need to buy and I'm going to buy that stuff next week and go for it but now I'm doing the, the turning for the for the tip of the electrode